Welcome back at Johnny's Desk. Today let's have a look at how to convert an audio signal into a PWM signal. You will see a schematic, a PCB and the assembled circuit board. Further on I give you an overview of the working principle and use cases. With this circuit we can easily make a class D power amplifier, a Tesla coil interrupter, a plasma speaker, a DC to DC converter and much more. PWM means pulse width modulation and does exactly that. The pulse width is modulated by another signal, for example an audio signal. This signal is called the modulator. A modulator signal of 0 volts leads to a duty cycle of 100%. The modulator signal of 5 volts leads to a duty cycle of 0%. Now you might have figured out that our PWM output is inverted. With an analog voltage between 0 and 5 volts we can set the duty cycle. Now I want to show you a few examples where you can find PWM in your everyday life. If we connect an LED to the output, we can see it being dimmer with low duty cycle and brighter with high duty cycle. We can conclude that the duty cycle of a PWM signal can represent a DC voltage. But why do we want the signal to be so rectangular? Because in electronics things work more efficient when right angled. For example, do we have to switch MOSFETs with either a low or a high signal to drive it efficiently. This means the gate driving signal must change fast. Everything in between would cause some losses. Now that we know how PWM works we can explore the schematic. The main parts are the buffered input with amplification, a triangle signal generator, a comparator and some voltage regulation. Our audio signal is AC coupled into the first operational amplifier, configured as a buffer. From here on the signal isn't true AC anymore, because it doesn't swing around 0 volts. The second half of the TL072 op amp is configured to amplify the signal by a factor of minus 4.7. The minus because of an inverting amp. Before this goes to the comparator it needs some DC bias, which will be set by a potentiometer, which also sets the duty cycle. Oh no, I forgot the DC blocking capacitor after the op amp. Because of that I just added a 100 nanofarad capacitor after R2. Here we have a 555 timer, configured to produce a triangle waveform. This waveform is then compared to the pre-amplified audio signal by the LM393, which then outputs a PWM signal. With the three potentiometers we can set frequency, duty cycle and audio input volume. Also there is a switch for low and high frequency mode. The PCB was created with Easy EDA. If you want to know how to do this in detail, then watch my Easy EDA tutorial and don't forget to hear the Easy EDA song in the end. Here I used the grid ground plane so we can solder it easier. Since no big current is flowing here, this is ok. As you can see, I use the back side to mount the PCB and to hold the potentiometers. This is a major design trick to use the smallest room for a front panel. But because of that, there is no room for complicated circuitry. Sadly, there is one thing I forgot to add, an output buffer in form of a MOSFET gate driver. So I have to create a new version with a proper output driver in the future. But for now we have to add an external driver stage before we can connect some MOSFETs. So I did just that and added a MOSFET gate driver. Also I added a connector on the back side to connect to my modular synth power supply. On the new connector we can connect a MOSFET gate. Now we can test it with a plasma speaker. I just connected a high voltage transformer to a MOSFET and now I'm driving the MOSFET gate with my newly built PWM converter.
Here I have the switching frequency in the audible range. Now I have connected my synthesizer to the audio input. This was it for today. Thank you for watching Johnny's Desk. Please subscribe and tell me in the comments what you liked and what you didn't like. And maybe you have an idea what I should do next. Bye until next time at Johnny's Desk.